In this video, we're going to explain how to do a lab where you actually measure the speed of sound using resonance with this apparatus. Before doing this lab, you'll need to know things like what a standing wave is, what nodes and antinodes are, what constructive and destructive interference are, so you might need to review the standing wave video before you continue. In this lab, we're going to measure the speed of sound and we are going to use this apparatus and a tuning fork together. How can we do that? Using our trusty speed equals frequency times wavelength. So all we need is to get frequency and the wavelength and multiply them together. Well, where are we going to get the frequency? Well, look at this. Frequency is written right on the tuning fork. How are we going to get the wavelength? Well, we're going to use this apparatus and the ideas of resonance and standing waves to get the wavelength. So let's see what Mr. T's got here. Okay, what we have here is this is a plastic tube, and from here down in the plastic tube, it's filled with air. Starting right about there, right now, down, it's filled with water. Um, I can adjust the height of the water in the tube and therefore the length of the air column by raising and lowering this water filled cup over here. Uh, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to strike a tuning fork and hold it at the top and let's see what happens. Here we go. When Mr. T did that demonstration, he was changing the water length in the, in the tube, looking for resonance, or listening for resonance, and it kind of happened quickly. So, let's set it right for resonance and see what that sounds like. Okay, when you write on resonance, this is what it sounds like. Oh, I see what Mr. T's going to do. What's happening is we got the tuning fork up here and it's making sound waves and the sound waves travel down the tube and they bounce off the water surface and they come right back up to the tuning fork. So in the air column right here, you've got waves going down and you've got reflected waves coming back and they're going to mix together and they're going to make a standing wave. Standing waves, okay. Quick refresher. You can have a standing wave whenever you have two waves and the two waves have the same amplitude and they also have the same wavelength. So there's a wavelength and there's a wavelength. So I have two of the same wave and they mix through each other. And when that happens, I have areas like here where the wave is not moving and then I have areas like here where the wave is moving a lot. And if you remember we call the areas that are not moving like that call these areas nodes. There's one there. And we call these areas that are moving a lot, we call these areas antinodes. There's one there. There's going to be one right here. Looks like there's one right here. Looks like there's going to be one right here. And I also notice there's going to be a node right there.
Okay, so we remember about standing waves, so what's the big deal? Well, remember, what we want to measure is we want to measure the wavelength of the sound. We're trying to figure out the speed of sound. We already know the frequency. If we could just measure the wavelength, frequency times wavelength is speed. So what Mr. Thompson did was Mr. Thompson formed resonance in this tube. And when there was a standing wave in the air column in this tube, when it was loud, that was because there was an antinode at the top. Now the water surface right here blocks the air from vibrating, so there is always a node right at the water surface. So if we measure the distance between the node and the antinode using the scale that's right on the tube, there is a way to figure out what the wavelength is by knowing that this is how far apart a node and an antinode are. So how can we do that? And the answer is by looking at our standing wave again and seeing that here is a wavelength. And here our nodes and antinodes. So let's draw this. Here is, from here to here is one wavelength. And notice within the wavelength I've got a node, an antinode, a node, an antinode, and a node. So in the tube what I actually have is there was an antinode at the top and there was a node at the bottom. So this distance in here is the length of the air column in the tube when I hear it being loud. So the question is, in terms of this wavelength, how far apart is a node and an antinode? So I can see, first of all, if I start here, here to here is half a wavelength. So if here to here is one half of the wavelength, then here to here is a quarter of a wavelength. So we can use our knowledge of standing waves with the resonance tube to actually measure the wavelength that the tuning fork produces. So once again, let's draw on here. There's, the an there's an antinode, there's an antinode, and there's a node, and there's a node, and there's a node. And I also know that that from there to there is a wavelength. So if I look carefully, I can see here's a node, here's an antinode. In terms of this distance, the distance from the node to the antinode is a quarter of the wavelength. So the distance from a node to an antinode is equal to a quarter of the whole wavelength. So that means the length of the tube from top to bottom of the air column is equal to a quarter of the wavelength. So here's what Mr. Thompson did. He took the tuning fork, put it over the top, which sent sound waves down the tube, they bounce off the water, coming back up the tube and he adjusted the length of it so that the length of this air column would be just right to make a standing wave inside the tube, waited for it to be loud because when it's loud there is an antinode. Antinodes are loud at the top and there is a node at the bottom. And because we know that here's an antinode Here's an antinode. Here is a whole wavelength. Here's a node. Here's a node. Here's a node. So I have node, antinode, node, antinode, node. And the whole length is a wavelength that nodes to antinodes. is a quarter of a wavelength. So this distance right here 
which is the length of this tube, length of the air column, I should say, which is the distance between a node and an antinode, is a quarter of the wavelength. So what I'm going to do it to find the speed of sound is I'm going to use this tuning fork, which has a known frequency right on it, and make standing waves. I'll write down the frequency of the tuning fork. I'm going to measure, I'm going to wait for a loud sound at the top. And when there is, I know I have a note, an anti-node there. I have a node at the water surface. So I know that this length is a quarter of the wavelength. So the wavelength of the sound waves here is four times this length, because I'm really just measuring that distance with this, this distance with that. And so once I have the wavelength, multiply it by the frequency written on the tuning fork, I have the speed of sound.